Chan 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 Here is a special announcement from Mujinga Province brought to you by Chete FM. The best radio station in Mujinga Province is also the biggest radio station in Mujinga Province having the widest coverage and broadcasting in Chinsali on 91.3 FM and in Nakonde on 89.9 FM. Chete FM reaches more people in Mujinga Province than any other private radio station we have the best programming the hardest working radio presenters and the widest coverage widest coverage radio is serious business to us advertise with chete fm to reach more people in mochinga province call us on 0955-899-899 chete fm radio for the people of mochinga province Dr. Mjajati, you're famous for you're like I'd say you're an aqua advocate. You're always encouraging people to drink water like <laughs> I don't know 10 20 times a day as much as possible. Am I even doing the right thing having an energy drink on this show? Is that an energy drink? Yeah. It is an energy drink. I'm sure there's water there. Like three ice cubes melting in the drink so if it spills would the ground get wet? <laughs> That's one good way of looking at it. So you see? Please uh, use certain words sparingly around Nelson because he's getting excited just hearing those words from you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dr. Aaron Zimba... How do you pronounce this? Zimbanete. 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 Mujajati. It is. It is. It sounds very Zimbabwean, yeah. It is? So how, how much of you is Zimbabwean? How much of you is Zambian then? Half is Zimbabwean of me. The other half is Zambian. Like literally. The funny side of you must be Zimbabwean. It's actually Zambian, surprisingly. It's 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 my mother who is more funny than my dad. Right. <laughs> you actually speak a lot more about kids inheriting their intelligence from their mothers. From their mothers. Their mothers. Yeah. It's a very interesting theory. And uh, the, I mean, the jury is still out there. There's a lot of debate around it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, remember, intelligence is a very complex subject. Um, complex in the, th in the sense that what goes into what makes you intelligent is not just your genes. Um, you also have the environment. You also have uh, your economics. You also have all kinds of things that go into what turns out to make you what the intelligence and all. What would make you score highly on any intelligence matrix? Mm -hmm. So, so genes are just one issue. So, really, um, we we make such posts to basically spark conversation and spark debate and spark disagreement and spark uh, interest in the subject. So You're pretty good at that from, too. from the day you posted that, there's been a lot of debate in my home because I've got two kids. Right. Okay. And that we know of. Yes. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and from the day you made that post, yeah. anytime I, my, one of my kids does anything smart, my wife says, according to Dr. Mchajati, this came from my side of but the family. But is that bad? This is me. Yeah, it is that bad. So Apologies. <laughs> No, you don't need we, to apologize. We we apologize <laughs> to the men. <laughs> this nigga's a college dropout. So obviously, if his kids turn out to be anything remotely successful, it's definitely not from him. But remember one thing? Steve Jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, yeah. Those are like, Bill Gates. Oh, shut up. All those, those, all those are like, college dropouts. Those so. are like zero point. Firstly, all those are white and you're not. <laughs> right? And those are like 0. 0.000005%. Of college dropouts. I, I'm in that category of college dropouts. Oh, the sorry. guys who succeeded, even though they dropped out. Dr. Mjajati, welcome to that Z podcast. And we're so excited to you know have you on the show because you're a man who wears many hats. You're a doctor. You're an entrepreneur. You're an author. You're a physician. I'm losing my breath here with a list of things that you know that you do. And one of the things that of, I'm sure you didn't plan on, even on your university or whatever, well, very few people plan on being social media influencers. How do you even end up there, though? No, for me, being on social, yeah, on social, particularly Facebook, yeah, or like running a page was was an accident. Um, I was bored out of my mind. <laughs> I had just been fired. 
Who fired you? Well, uh, we'll get to we'll that get to story. That. Okay, cool. <laughs> so I was fired. I was bored. I was at home doing nothing, feeling sorry for myself. And yeah, and I was, I was at home for like six months straight. And that's when one of my friends said, you know what? Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Why don't you help people, you know, through social media? I resisted for a while. Then eventually I did it. I started taking that page very seriously when we, when we reached 50,000 followers. Wow. Uh, before that, I just used to post anything and everything. Mm. When we reached 50,000, we had to be a bit more serious. Yeah. So we had to now be very clear about, you know, what is it that we are bringing to social media. And in doing so, we needed to be very clear about our audience. Who are we talking to through mm. that page? Yeah. Because the easy temptation is that I'm a doctor. When the, when stuff, when I put out stuff, it, it can easily be targeted for my fellow doctors. And that way, it leaves the ordinary person behind. Uh. And those are the majority. So you'll find that we were very clear about who our target audience is. So having defined the target audience, it became very easy to come up with content. And from 50,000, now you're like at 383. I never saw that coming. Never, ever in my wildest imagination. Stevie Wonder when wouldn't I, have seen that coming. Never. <laughs> when, I, when we reached like 50,000, yeah. for us it was the pinnacle. I mean, we were very happy to reach 50,000. Mm -hmm. And we thought, okay, we are happy here and we'll stay here. But then the thing took a life of its own. And, right. and it keeps growing. And as it grows, even the number of people who are now interested in the page is also growing. Mm -hmm. We've also expanded the group that is managing the page as well. So, Man, so it's not just you. Well, initially it was just me. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. But then the burden is growing. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also very busy. Mm. So we had to bring in others. Because to, that was going to be my assist. next question. Because initially when I saw how much you post and this guy is a doctor, I'm like, is he a doctor like Dr. Dre is a doctor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm actually a literal doctor. I see patients. Now, fortunately mm. for me, because I run my own business, so uh, so I, I it's easier for me to run my schedule. So you've mm. got like a hospital? Like a the clinic? way I'm sitting with you here right yeah. now, I could get an idea either from the team that's running the page yeah. mm -hmm. to say, can we talk about this? Mm -hmm. Or I could have an idea myself, run it by them. And I'll quickly pick up my phone and post and put it down and we'll continue the conversation. All right. Yeah. Well, what, what do you think draws people mostly to your page? What, what do you think, you know, people find very... You know, I'm quite interested to find, to find out that as well because I, I'm quite curious as well to know what draws people to the page. Oh, you're funny. I can tell you that. Yeah. I think I think I, the, I, think, I don't know. I think the one people the the, the one post sorry that um, really got you your number skyrocketing. If I recall correctly, the watermelon issue. Wow! Okay, I, that, I saw a huge jump. That that was a post you were on steroids. That, oh, no, that no, no, post no. was on steroids. Um, <laughs> Did you make that up? What the watermelon thing? The yeah. watermelon story. Yeah. Um, so I was bored out of my mind. I'm I'm generally very bored. Uh huh. Uh, and I generally spend most of my time by myself. So when I have people around like you right now, yeah, uh, it, it sparks a lot of ideas in my head. So already I've come up with a post that I'll make just from this conversation. Interesting. Oh, yes. Okay. So I was bored and I was seated and I was looking up some stuff. Then I came across the watermelon. In reading about the watermelon, then I came across the fact that it has some aphrodisiac properties. And of all the interesting benefits of watermelon, sex sells. So we, we ran with the aphrodisiac side of it. And yeah, the rest No wonder Kalenga loves watermelons. I could not understand now, the now, show. For you, sure. Watermelon it took that long to figure me. out, really. It took that what Man, I was not interested in your sex life. Man. I, no, I, watermelon is good for your sex I, life. I, I always man. feel uh, for a Zambian man, if you're telling me anything is good for sex, you're gonna see sales spike that week or that year for that product. Remember those the the the, the, the energy drink, power, power energy drink. The moment people heard this is good for sex, sales went up. Mm -hmm. If you told people today cassava is good for chops, it's good for sex. Mm -hmm. That's how Zambians are. But fortunately for the watermelon, it, it actually is good for sex. Do you take watermelon? No, not as much. How's your sex life? <laughs> Fantastic. Ah. <laughs> Man, I get more ass than a toilet seat. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I'm sure it could get better with watermelon. <laughs> you think so? I think so. I'll, I'll, I'll try some tonight. I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> but I'm though. single though, so it'll be very difficult. <laughs> mm. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm curious, Doc, uh, mm. about the watermelon. I think a lot of guys would like to know as well. What does it do exactly inside, like, inside my body when I eat a watermelon? So, if you take the watermelon, the, the, you have the red portion of it mm-hmm. and the, the white portion of it, the rind uh-huh. white portion of it. Um, it contains a very interesting chemical. And that particular chemical, what it does is that it causes your blood vessels to dilate. The same way that Viagra does. Mm. Yeah, so it's the same mechanism. Except that in Viagra, those chemicals are in higher proportion. So when you take Viagra, the effects are almost immediate. But with watermelon, because it's a natural product, it means that you have to, to you have to be very consistent in your usage mm. of, of the product for you to actually see the actual benefits. Did you, did you ever get feedback, maybe uh, like from the public on your social media, about how uh, if sales or should I say consumption of watermelon actually increased because of your post? You know, some people told me that, um, yeah. and I was very surprised to, to <laughs> see that. But but also at the time that we were running the watermelon issue, yeah, uh, there was. There were political anecdotes at the time. That oh crap! Were, that were also, you know, linking, the UPND, PF. They were, they, yeah, they were linking yeah. our post to political <laughs> anecdotes at the time. Ah, so that is so far fetched. <laughs> How so, did people? Jesus, people are bored. Oh yeah, because you see, at the time, I remember the the UPND were using the watermelon for their political satire. Yeah. Yeah. So was that because of your post? No, no, no. It was before our post. Oh, okay. Way before us. So oh, by okay. the time we came in. Um, on the on the on the PF side, they thought we were against them. On the UPND side, they thought we were for them. Jesus. So so there was that very healthy conflict. Yeah. But did you did you face any backlash though? A lot. Pl- From the personally? PF. Well, plenty, plenty. From the PF backlash. at the time, yeah. What plenty. happened? A lot of people were at the time thought that we were just doing politics. It mm. wasn't about health. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But was there an element of politics in it though? No. I, I'd like to find out more about the backlash that you got, though. <laughs> like, did you get any personal calls, any attacks? No, 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 not really. Like, yeah. personal calls and attacks. But on the on the comment section, there was a lot of um, animosity, actually. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That was a, you know, last year was a very interesting period to live in, and I don't even want to share my story again. I think I did that in the Oscar episode, yeah. About what? Oh, about the PF thing. Yeah, PF issues. What did you get any backlash after that? Um. After the, the Oscar episode, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm, ju- I'm just saying I shared my story on the Oscar episode, so I don't, I don't want to. No, no, you, you can go ahead. No, nah, I'm nah, actually nah. curious to know. I did share that story on the Oscar episode. No, there's a lot more that you didn't say though. When we do our episode, I, I will do that thing that you told yeah. me about. Yeah, including the guy's name. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, so, so. this nigga here was threatening him. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, he he faced a lot of that. Mm. But like I said, story for another day. No, but but. But anyway, nobody, <laughs> nobody, nobody called on yeah. the phone or sent messages threatening us. But in the comment section, we received a lot of animosity. Yeah. Doctor Mjajat, the reason why we brought you here to find out more about your life and you know possibly inspire others, you know, from your story, especially it 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 really you know gets me all warmed up inside to find Ooh, out that. Oh, look at you, Doctor Mjajat, you warming <laughs> you up inside and whatnot. You kinky boy, you. <laughs> is that is there any medicine that you can concoct for this guy's brain? Oh, I have something already. Oh, psh, that, yeah. that works. my brain is perfect. That works perfectly. Because his, his brain literally lives in the gutter. No, at it the end of there. this show, I'll have something in mind. Oh. <laughs> you know, it was interesting to find, uh, you know, find out more about your life story and how you've managed to achieve this level of success. And as a boy raised in Chaisa Township with what, 10 siblings? Yes. From our yes, research? Yes. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm a third born out of 10 people. Oof. Would it be right to consider you and your life a rags to riches story? You could say that. Are you rich? No, not yet. So it's not rags to riches then? No, 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 not really. He's being humble. Not yet. He's being very humble. We've we've heard stories, Doctor Mjitati. Oh, about, really? Yeah, about your finances and all. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, are you scared ZRA is watching? I think it's not going to be a Bowman it, issue. So you've it's, got it's a very funny, fancy watch, though. Funny, I, I have a visit from ZRA. I think it's going to be next week or the other. Week. <laughs> They are doing an audit at one of our films. Oh, you and I both <laughs> had had one last week. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, tell us a bit about your childhood. You know, take take us back. You know, tell us a bit about your upbringing and you know early family life. The things that people don't know about okay. Doctor Mchachati. Yeah. Right. So so I, I was born of a Zimbabwean immigrant. Uh, my dad is Zimbabwean. My mother is uh, is Zambian. She's Lozi from Western Province. 
and uh, yeah i was born and raised in chaisa compound I, I i was raised in a home where my my parents insisted that we speak their language so i speak both shona and lozi for that reason mm. and being raised in lusaka and be, having gone to government schools um chichewa was like our first language so i i if you hear me speaking any of these eastern eastern province languages i sound like i'm from there um but not really so so born and raised in chaisa compound third born out of 10 10 children i went to emma'sdo primary same, school same father same mom yeah all 10 yeah all 10. Very, very i family. always wonder how yeah. parents manage you know like having that many of us in our house you know no what i mean idea. <laughs> <laughs> Ten. christopher got to go to 11. yeah Eesh. well but yeah, then yeah. his math was always off so <laughs> 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 so, so 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 we're 10. Yeah. Yeah. And um although we were raised in Chaisa compound there's something that m- my parents did that um that uh, that probably changed everything for for us despite the environment in which we were raised. Mm. There's one thing two things actually couldn't compromise in that home that is going to school and going to church. You can do everything else. Oh, the church part, yeah. But going to school and going to church was not You could not compromise. Yeah. So that is why you find that of all my father's children, all 10 of them finished school. Most of them went to college despite coming from that kind of yeah. environment. I, I think you should have been raised in your family. Oh, the okay. school part. <laughs> yeah. So from, from Emma's primary school, I went to Matero Boys. From Matero Boys, Hillcrest, Hillcrest, Unza. And uh, yeah, that's it. What, what did your parents do? My father was a laborer mm. uh, who had a very humble educational background. Um, slightly shy of junior secondary school. Okay. I mean, he can read and write very well. And he can speak very decent English. That's the same level as Kalinga, actually. But, uh, oh, is that so? Yeah, that's, the, that's his level You're doing of literacy. Well. Thank you very much. But, Don't look so um, serious. But uh, most of his life, he he ran his own businesses. Yeah. So most of his life, he ran his own businesses. Same with my mother. Very humble education. But most of her life, she ran her own businesses. All right. So one of the <coughs> things my parents would say often mm-hmm. would be that, look, yes, we insist you go to school. We insist you get degrees. But should life demand that you... Or life throws a curved bow at you that yeah. it requires that you do something different, be flexible enough to do something different. Like start your own business. How much of what your parents did do you feel influenced you to end up where you are today in medicine? Me, not not so much. Medicine, okay. apart from taking me to school. Yeah. I mean, they are not doctors in they, their families. They so. didn't give you one of those lectures, study hard, become a doctor. No. Or a pilot Street. or a lawyer. Yeah. No. My parents, all they were interested in is go to school and that's it. Mm-hmm. What you did with your school, they really didn't force it on you mm. to say, no, you have to be a lawyer, you have to be a doctor, you have to be the other thing. All they were interested in is, have you gone to school and have you passed, have you done your assignments? Are you doing school? And that was it. What you did with your school, they really never... And they were involved in all 10 of your siblings. Like, for example, lives. like, for example, for me, I never went to kindergarten, right? But by the time I was starting grade one, I knew how to write my name. I knew how to do simple arithmetic. I mm. knew how to, you know, do simple things because my mother taught me from home. Uh-huh. So by the time I was going into grade one, I was this, you know, wonder kid. But <laughs> I wasn't even a wonder kid. I was taught from home. Yeah. So the stuff they were teaching me in grade one is things I had already seen at home. So it was just repetition, which was revision for you. There's there's something about about a lot of black parents african parents especially where they have so many kids because they they see that as a retirement and investment plan you know what i mean if i have 10 kids and i put them all through school eventually when i get old and i can't work they'll take care of me do you feel that might have been a sense in how your family structure was are we speaking black text but but you see um I, i think it's a smart that's why you find that the challenge we have as Africans is that from the time we got colonized and enslaved and all that, our history and our story was written by our conquerors. Mm-hmm. So most of what we are and who we are, we don't know. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And because we don't know, a lot of things were lost in translation. That's why I find that if you go back in African history, you will not find words like orphan. You don't have words like uncle, auntie. Like in my in in my tribe in Mashona land, the word auntie and uncle don't exist. We only have fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters. We only have brothers and sisters. No cousins. We cousins is something that we learned, you know. So meaning that the issue you are raising to say um, the issue it's, it's a very debatable issue anyway. To say should should parents have so many kids push them into school so that they become they look after their parents afterwards as an insurance policy um or as your retirement package yeah whichever way you look at this debate in one extreme it can be discouraged in the other extreme it can be encouraged here's the extreme that is discouraged where you as a parent you become a hundred and one percent now a parasite on your children it becomes a bit of a challenge <coughs> but um but it, it is this, but which you were this, to them at some point. Of no? course. But there's this joy that comes from looking after your own parents. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. There's that joy that comes from um, buying your dad a car. There's yeah. that joy that comes from building your, your mother a house. Mm. So if you get a chance to do that, do it. Yeah, I know I know that yeah. joy. Like this dropout bought his mom a new car. So I know the joy. Oh, okay. look at yeah. you. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm trying to understand your life, Dr. Mjajati. You mentioned you grew up in Chaisa. Yeah. And I, I know the sort of lifestyle that a kid, you know, growing up in um, a, a township goes Especially through. Especially during my time. Especially, you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to understand how, you know, you did not succumb to the pressures of, you know, township life, drugs, alcohol, you know, that street life. It was, it, what kind of a I, child I, I were can, you? I can only imagine yeah. how difficult it was for my parents. Mm. Yeah, I can only imagine. Um, because we were exposed to all those things. Did you dabble in any of those? Um, yes, you did. <laughs> no. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> the pause. <laughs> Next question is which one? <laughs> which one is this one? Which one? <laughs> yeah. Um, um, look, you grew up in an environment where um, at that time, DEC did not exist. <laughs> okay. It answers everything. DEC did not exist. Mm-hmm. So you'd be sitting with friends yeah. and the joint is going round and you take it from this guy and you pass it on to the next guy. And, and you talk about how school was. Well, and you talk about how school was, but you, you don't you don't smoke it. You just take it from this oh, guy. It's this guy who's smoking oh, this side. Please. And this guy is smoking this side. So you take it from this guy and you pass it on. <laughs> and you pass it on to this guy. I need to ask this now that we're the doctor, man. Well... <sighs> So, 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 so if you if you take Chaisa compound, for uh-huh. example, the stuff we did, the things that preoccupied us the most was football, okay? mm. playing soccer. But other than that, there were things that preoccupied us with things like gambling, mm. you know, uh, playing cards, um, playing. We used to call it sojo. Yeah, with uh, uh, bottle tops and all. Playing yeah. tail. I'm not, not chapo tail. I'm done. Tell us which one. <laughs> you, Martin would know. You spin a you spin a coin. Yeah. You spin a coin and cover it with your hand. Oh, then he gets heads or tails. Uh, heads or tails. Well, you have to push another coin inside, and then if you lift your hand, if it's if 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 the if the if the surfaces are different, yeah, then it is me who has one, and whatever is in the pot is mine, and it keeps going around like that. You guys are a very different casino, eh? Yeah. yeah. So, um, and and we played all kinds of money related games, yeah, and um, and all kinds of other games that you play in the shanty compounds, but. The other thing, it was not uncommon at that time mm. where you are going to school and you find a dead body in the street. Jesus. And someone was murdered last night and you find a dead body in the street. It was not uncommon at that time to find... Um, no, crime was everywhere at the time. Mm. That's rough. Now, what, what used to happen was that because we lived in that environment, the criminals where our the people that you know but when they go out there those are the criminals out there when you know when they are with you they are friends it's your neighbors it's people that you know so it was you just hear oh so and so was arrested or so and so was shot dead or so and so or so and so disappeared yeah can i take you back to the weed though yes when we're in high school we're the headmaster Mr. Mgwaga, who'd always, uh, Mr. Kaulila before that, who would always say, do not smoke this herb because this thing, one pull will stay in your brain for five years. 
How much truth is there in any drug staying inside you for years? No, it's bullshit. It was. Well, eh? it's a, it's <laughs> a, it's a, it's a, it's a myth. It doesn't yeah. stay. But but the thing is, this about yeah. marijuana though, or weed if you like. Mary Jane. Generally, generally, do not allow children below the age of eighteen to smoke weed. What does it do? It, it actually does damage brains. It does. And for a fully grown adult? For a fully grown adult, well, you're an adult. You know what you're doing. You're already well, damaged. Yeah, but it's, but is it, dam- is it damaged? <laughs> <laughs> but the damage that's, is but equally the same, that's, right? That's true in my case, though. <laughs> but it's not the weed that damaged me. So if you're an adult, <laughs> if you're an adult the argument is different. What's the argument there? Let's, let's, well, take, let's take away the responsibility part aside. Well, it's not, it's not as bad as... Is weed it's, bad? It's not as... No, no, it's not. Right? So I've never heard of anybody who no, died not. from weed. Overdosed and or overdosed. killed someone because but, of high weed. But children, <laughs> children yeah. or kids below the age of eighteen, yeah. as much as possible, they shouldn't touch that stuff. No, and that applies to a lot of everything: other alcohol, yeah. everything, alcohol, yeah. sex, yeah. porn. Because you see, if you take, uh, you see, it's fun that you. It's funny that you've raised the issue of porn. Oh, your eyes lit up. There, no, they did. Do you know why? <laughs> and I tell you why they did. Yeah. Um. Porn messes up with your brain. W- more than you can imagine. I know this. You can't un- maintain eye contact. This is the church. No, I and can't g- because it messes up with your brain. Yeah. Now. Yeah. If you take weed, for example, people will tell you all kinds of things about it. Okay. A lot of things they'll tell you are true, but when they are now measuring the size of the damage it does on a population, mm. that's when they start to exaggerate. Because if the damage on this on the population is your interest, then why are you ignoring alcohol? Which does more damage. Which does worse damage than weed. What about far. cirrhosis? No, by far. By far. Brain damage itself? Yeah. If it's brain damage, you have you have more people that are damaged brain wise from, al- from alcohol than weed. I've never heard of a car accident because somebody was out on weed. Because another thing you can do you is this. extreme slow, actually. <laughs> you, can, you can actually do a very simple experiment. Mm-hmm. Take a hundred people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, even 200 people. Mm-hmm. And give them alcohol. And walk away. Chances are when you come back, you find that somebody has beaten someone, something bad has happened. Somebody has whatever. puked. Or someone has puked. Or someone has broken a leg or something. Yeah. Do the same Put thing. Put 200 people in a give room. Give them weed. <clears throat> and just light the spliff. There will be holy laughter in that room. When you come back, just find people laughing. Laughing and very hungry. <laughs> and hungry. <laughs> and they need to eat. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what's so bad about uh, being hungry and yeah. being hungry and laughing? Yeah. See? So as long as they're not below 18 years old, mm-hmm. for me personally, I have a problem with children smoking weed. I have, I have children issues. with big ch- I've But if you're an children. adult like yourself, you choose to smoke weed. So if alcohol does more damage, why is the weed illegal then? One theory is that the white guy didn't want to see black people happy, so they made it illegal. In, uh, I'm told so that's many, why they made it illegal in, in Jamaica, though. There are so many theories around it, you see. And most yeah. of it is vested in fear, conjecture, and assumptions. And racism. You could say that. Yeah, yeah in Jamaica, I, I was talking to a Jamaican guy about a month and a half ago. I was like, no, they just didn't want to see black people happy. You could so say anything, that. anything that made the black guy happy, the white man made illegal. But anyway, moving on. I'm not but, sure about that. So, down with school, why medicine? Yeah. Uh, for me, medicine was an accident. What? There's a lot of things in your life were accidents. Yes, huh? yes, yes. Because <laughs> the things I really... Are, are you married? Yes. I, I, Is I, that an accident too? No, no. Are that you was sure? deliberate. Does it? Okay. So, back to why medicine. He, he hesitated too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, why medicine? Yeah. So, so, medicine was an accident. You know, growing up, my main interest really initially was music. Okay, hmm. so I sang in the choir. I used to do tenor. I used to do male soprano, and I got myself a guitar. I used to like really get obsessed around music. Uh, my father didn't agree that I should be focusing on music. He wanted me to focus on school and other things. So when I got into university, into secondary school, my main interest was law. Up to the time I was in grade twelve. When I got to grade 12, you know, these careers, masters, I don't know whether they, they are still there in schools nowadays. During my time, we, we used to apply to UNSA in the second term before mm. even get to, to write your exam. Yeah. So we had applied to UNSA. So during that process, that's when this teacher from Uganda made me 
convinced me that maybe looking at my strengths in subjects, I should consider medicine. medicine. And that's how I changed my mind from being a lawyer to a, do to a doctor. That's what I'm saying. It was an accident. And yeah, when by the time the wounds acceptance letter came, I was in, in, in natural sciences. Seven years later, I was a doctor. Do you believe in fate or destiny or do you believe the choices that you make will determine whatever conclusion that you find yourself in? It's interesting that I'm a scientist and a doctor, but I'm still also superstitious at the same time. <laughs> so I believe in both. Mm -hmm. Because obviously I'm asking this question based off what you just told me, that some people would say we don't believe in accidents. That is a design that that's how your life was meant to well, you could say that, but uh, it's funny how even after I became a doctor, most of the stuff I do and have done sort of like pull me away from the word. <clears throat> right. Like Facebook? So was I, was I really supposed to be a doctor? Uh, probably a very cool one. Is that so? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> like <laughs> Dr. Oz. Yeah. <laughs> Who I don't like now anymore. Dr. Phil? <laughs> and I don't like it, but Dr. Oz, have you yeah. noticed how now he's, he's kissing Trump's ass because now he's running for, I think, Senate? Do you pay attention to that dude? Nah. Jesus. So he, wa he wants funding from Trump? Yeah. Ugh, nonsense. <clears throat> what a dude. Dr. Mjajati, um, you, you, you've, you know, you've, you've, you have quite an, um, had an, an interesting and sometimes controversial career in medicine from working as a young doctor at UTH to, you know, taking up big positions in the health sector to running your own private practice. I think before I even ask what I want to ask, what, what, what are you specialized in? Right. I'm, a, I'm an internist. I, I am specialized in internal medicine. What, what, is, what does that deal with? Like, okay. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's that bit of medicine that you always have to explain. For example, yeah. <clears throat> if I told you I was a pediatrician. I would know kids. You would know. Yeah. If I told you I was gyne obstetrics and gynecology. Which is what Elson almost you, did. You would know. If I told you I was a surgeon. And does in his spare time, gynecology. If I told yeah. you I was a surgeon, <laughs> you would know, right? Yeah. Now, oh, you're a dick. It's, it's the bit that remains after you remove these three. That's what is called internal medicine. So, so it, the practice of medicine has four major disciplines, as in the, the basic backbone disciplines. Mm -hmm. You have pediatrics, obst obstetrics and gynecology, surgery, and internal medicine. And that's why so I. So, internal thought. medicine, that's you. Mm -hmm. Your time, how, how long were you at UTH? How long were you there for? I spent more, in fact, my entire career at UTH. Seriously, so what was your worst experience there? At UTH? Yeah. Something that, you know, still haunts you to this day. Like, shit, how did that happen? I lost a patient. How did that go? Um, it was, breathing, I was a very young doctor. I had just graduated and I was attending to this 15 year old who was very sick. But he wasn't like malnourished. He had to yeah. really, really sick. You know, people are sick, but they are healthy. I think he must have had a heart issue, that guy. And um, one of the seniors asked me to, to go and assist him. I don't know whether it was with oxygen or something. Um, and also to insert a cannula or something. I can't remember what. By the time I turned around to go and attend to the guy, I found him gasping and he died. I, I didn't think somebody that young should die. And in the circumstances, he died. I, I still remember that guy. But what, 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 what did you find actually killed him in the end? He had a heart issue. He had a damaged heart. Hmm. But he was very young. I don't know why I thought he was going to have a colorful story like Maria. Oh, in, the, yeah, in the mortuary and stuff. Did, did, did you watch the uh, Maria Zalumis episode? Mm -mm. And how she told us about stories for the mortuary and stuff. Mm -mm. I thought you were going to have one of those as well. <laughs> no, those, anyway. those, those were... Were, were something even even for ourselves. I mean, when I, when I first went into medical school, for example, you go to medical school and they assign you a dead body and you're seeing it for the first time and you have to study it for the for the next two years or something. It was quite traumatic, but uh, it was a necessary process. It it sort of built you to become a better doctor, stronger doctor. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me yeah. in my career as a doctor, what was the most? Yeah, it, it's it's that patient that I lost, and I still I still remember that patient. Yeah left an indelible mark on you, eh? No, it did. Um, yeah. You know, it's funny how when you're a doctor, right? People think that because you're a doctor and you see patients all the time and you are surrounded by maybe 10, 15 people who die on you every day, so yeah. you're used to it. No. No. I don't know what the gods have done about death. You never get used to it. No matter how many times you see it. 
especially the mythical part. You don't know what happens on the other side. Yeah, it's, it's a too. very... It's a what's, very what's your take, though? On, what? on the afterlife? Yeah. I... I... I think there is there is I think there's 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 a higher intelligence to us. I think that um they could be there's a chance that there's a good chance that they could be the afterlife, I think. Why do you think that? Um I think that there's good reason to believe or to have hope in the afterlife. Hope is the right word. Yeah. Reason there's, 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 what would that be? The, the reason is that it makes this life worth your while. That's the whole part. Yes. That's not it, the it, reason. It, yeah, it, it's... Okay, it, life after death death is extremely difficult for me to, to explain or to, or to even have an opinion on. Is that because you are both... Or are you trying to... You're coming from two backgrounds. You have the Christ, Christian background and the medical background. So putting things together is what makes it complicated for you or what? Whether you are just a Christian or whether you are a scientist, yeah. provided you are a human being, there are gaps in the human story that you can't just feel. Like, for example, um, we can't. We are not very sure, in no uncertain terms, as to where we come from. As the Big beings. Bang. Well, you could say the Big Bang, but the Big Bang not has the so type many. of bang, though, and, Doctor. And, I, I mean, <laughs> say that. evolution, but evolution has its own problems. Yeah, it's, it can't completely explain where we come from. No, it can't. No, it cannot. The Big Bang is as ridiculous as it sounds, but we accept it because it's the best theory around. Okay, and then you have the creation story. It has mm. its own issues in there that I wouldn't want to go into right now because I may offend people. We do that every day on the show. No. We're kind of used to that now. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, funny he brings that up. I was listening to another podcast last night by uh, Jordan Peterson. Listen to his podcast. Okay. His, this episode one actually is, you should have read the Bible. And he he brings merits from both ends of creation and evolution and how they conflict and how the Bible is not clear on so many things. But anyway, story for another day. Doc, in 2017, you then became director of uh, health pra- is it health professionals council of zambia all oh, right i was chief executive officer of that person does that make you feel like i've arrived now no how was the money how was the paycheck looking yeah. the paycheck was good yeah government looks after its ceo well, like six figures well. no it was the money was good six figures type uh no not six figures per se but the, the money was good yeah the conditions of service were excellent uh, you're covering your watch now i've already seen it that's a very beautiful watch <laughs> <laughs> yeah i noticed the same thing eh? <laughs> yeah that's a very beautiful watch <laughs> He's trying to hide his uh, net worth. Yeah, we very really humble. Yeah. No, the, the 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 government looks after its CEOs very well. So, how long um, did you have that position for? I had the position for slightly over fifteen months mm-hmm. before I was asked to leave. Is it because of the CBU issue? It, I, I, up to now, yeah. to be honest, I still don't understand, and I still don't have reasons. And. Oh. And, and because the matter is in court, yeah. I, I'm unable to speak freely. Ah. When the matter is out of court, I'd, I'd be more than happy to tell you stories about that story. I think just for the sake of our viewers and listeners, putting people up to speed, uh, Dr. Mjajati had some controversial issue. Um, he made some decisions in that office which are highly unpopular. Like what? Uh, like deciding to ban CBU from administering the three medical programs. And I, I need to find out what led to that decision though. Okay. Yeah. First of all, the law provided for that decision. Mm. And second of all, because the law provided for the decision, you also needed to demonstrate and highlight the fact that the people that you are training, they are coming to handle probably the most important entity we have around our lives yeah you know when you are seeing these doctors going to school for training we take it for granted we always assume that they may never treat you but they will so when you are approaching medical training and you're approaching students in training you must always assume that if i'm the one who's sick and i'm helpless is this a type of health worker that i'm producing is this the type of person i'd want to treat me 
is this the type of person I'd want to treat my child? Is this the type, the quality of health worker that should mm. treat my own mother? If the answer is yes, then fine, let them continue. So you had an issue? Many issues. Many issues. So could that be one of the issues that got and you fired? And, and also it's not me who had the issues, by the way. Oh, okay. It's the law and the standards that had so many issues with what was going on there. Because if it was up to me, then it becomes very subjective. You see what I mean? It was a very objective tool that we used for assessment that the school in question didn't measure up at the time. I don't know where they are now, but at the time, the standard didn't agree with what was going on. So, Does a part of you feel maybe your firing was also maybe politically motivated? Like I said, I have no reasons. I don't know. Maybe the day I will get the No, but does reasons, a part of you feel that? Not really. Not really. I, 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 I feel that maybe um, the day I'm given the real reasons why I was fired, maybe I would understand. Do you think you'll get that? Not in this lifetime. So, so what, what did your dismissal letter say, though? Before, sorry, sorry for cutting you off. Sir. What did your dismissal letter say? It had no reasons. Just leave the office and that's it. It was blank, yeah. Just pack your shit and leave. Yeah, it was blank. Jesus. Yeah, you're, you're so, so had you not been fired? It, had you not been fired? Mm. What do you think you would have achieved by now? I'm sure you had plans, you had a roadmap, you had a blueprint of what you wanted to do. So had that not happened? Um, I can only answer this question this way. When we joined the HPCZ, um, we put together a team to help the council achieve its goals. Now, as management, our marching orders were in the strategic plan that they gave us. Mm. And that's what formed the basis of our performance. So what happened was that I'll tell you that in exactly 14 months, we went back to the board and we said, this three-year strategic plan you've given us, we have finished it. Can you give us another one? God damn. Yes. So they, they decided that they were going to write us, to give us another strategic plan within like four, five, six months. And then three weeks later, I heard on radio that I was fired. You heard on radio? What? Wow. That's one way of doing it. I think you're going to get that 2.6 million that you're suing for. You sued, yeah. Like I said, yeah. the, the nitty gritty details of this matter, I can't get into Oh, it's in court. It's in court. No, it's, this wow. is my opinion. You don't have to comment on it. But if you do, I live in But again, you I see, my, 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 dismissal, my dismissal <laughs> was, in, was in public domain. So yeah. if, you, if, you, if you read the news, if you follow even on social media platforms, it's all there. All right. Where were you at, at that particular point when, I was, when you heard of I the had dismissal? Just, I had just finished giving the matching orders to the team because I would have management meetings with the directors. Mm. So we had just finished giving the matching orders for the week. And Wait, the when you say matching, what do you mean? Because in my mind, it means firing. What no, no. No, like, like the goals for the week. And this is what we are doing this week. Mm -hmm. And these are the targets for this week. Oh, right. So if you came into my office, I always had this whiteboard and I still have the whiteboard because I think with my hand all mm. the time. Mm. I, I can't think without my hand. Mm. So I do do a lot. So I was doodling on the board and talking to my directors and telling them this year, this is the goals, this is the targets. Mm -hmm. The board wants us to achieve one, two, three, four things this year. These are the issues. And we're just finished doing that. And then they had just left the room. And I remember very well, I, I, had, I, I was reaching into the fridge to grab a bottle of water. Then I heard the announcement. I bet the people that you had given instructions to were like, yeah, we ain't going to do this shit no more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> they're, been, they're about to leave the yard. And Some then of them. <laughs> right? <laughs> Some of them. So, but if, if you did not get fired. But what? I was confused, really. Yeah. To, say, to say the least. I mean, I, I was confused. I didn't understand. That was quite disrespectful for me, Ed. No, I, I, yeah. I didn't understand. And I was confused. And, and I'm still confused. Is that how they do it? No, not for CEOs. So, man. So for, example, then. for example, um, you've seen chief executive officers dismissed from government parastatals. Mm. It, it's not that spectacular. Mm -mm. No. Because, I mean, there's so many people eyeing that job. So, there's probably people whispering to higher authorities about you all the time. Right. 
I'm not sure. I'm, I'm really, I'm not sure. Um, that's why I can't wait for the matter to be disposed of in court, so that maybe, maybe, just maybe, mm -hmm. the the employer will have will probably give reasons to the court. Then maybe I also get a chance to know what exactly transpired. If you did not I get, still don't know. If you did not get fired, what do you feel you you would have achieved in that position? That's what I just asked. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's difficult to say what we could have achieved because we worked with a very very strong team i think i think i was lucky as a person to have worked with a with a team that strong right no the team was was fantastic mm. um i think everyone in the team was better than me that's that's actually a, a very rare leadership quality because no, I find of, it easier. People. I find it easier to work with people who are better than. That's like, exactly for example, what I'm saying. If I'm trying to achieve something, if I'm going to move from here to where you are, and I know that, okay, for example, I know what I want, right? But I don't know how to get what I want. I'm going to look for someone who knows how. There you mm. go. Yeah, and I'll bring them in, and provided they're giving me the results that I want, everything else is irrelevant. Their ego is, irre is irrelevant insane, to me. Yeah. And that's exactly that's well, their opinion of me doesn't matter. Thank what you. I want is, are you giving me? Uh, what time you come for work? I don't bother. As long as the job is done. Do you give me? Did you give me the results I wanted mm -hmm. at the time I wanted them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of leaders have got really fragile egos where they want credit. So if they're going to hire someone smarter than them, they're going to feel they don't get the credit, which is really dumb because I've always said, I've been fortunate enough to run my own company and hire people. I always want to hire someone that's, that's smarter than me because if I'm smarter than you, then I don't need you, right? No, you don't. Yeah. Then what's the point? Why, the, why are you hiring even? That's it. Yeah, I mean. Doc, can we talk about your mental health? Mm. I was about to say issues. Let's just say, let's talk about your mental health. <laughs> um, you know, you've been very candid about how getting, you know, fired caused you so much emotional distress and uh, how that led you into depression. Um, have you, had you experienced depression like this before? Yeah. When? Mm, that was a long time ago. But, but not to that extent. Mm. Not to the extent of what I experienced during the time that you're referring to. Okay. Something similar, yes, but but not the extent that you're referring to. Um, yeah. And, and in fact, you see, the, the funny thing about being depressed is that you who's going through it, you don't know. That was my next question. Like, No, you don't know. You don't know yeah. that you're depressed. You only get to realize that you actually were depressed or you are depressed when someone actually walks up to you and has the courage to point it out to you that, bro, mm -hmm. who, who, who you, did you that have for issues. you? Who did that for you? Um, and here's what happens. Huh? And this happens a lot to a lot of people. People who acquire like these big posts, hmm. permanent secretary, D director general for Zesco or something, minister, even president. Hmm. What happens to you in that position is that you get a lot of attention. Uh, people come to you, people call you all the time and things like that. The day you lose that job, what also happens is that people leave and then your phone stops ringing. Okay. Now it's that silence that sometimes plays on your mind. And also for me at the time, because I didn't have, I didn't have reasons for why they made the decision and I was grappling with that. Plus the silence and the isolation, it just made the, the whole situation very difficult. Well, you so that? I would sit in my, in my, in my home office. I have a little, uh, home office at home. I'd I'd go in there in the morning, and it would be past midnight zero two. I don't even know how much time has passed. Hmm. And doing what? Literally nothing. Thinking maybe I can't even remember what I was thinking about. So that's the time that you, that you discovered Facebook. Yes. All right. We we'll come full circle. Unfortunately for me, comes all, right. all full circle now. Yeah. Yeah. That's the time that well, actually one of my friends came and. Um, Actually, one of my friends came and said, you know what? Why don't you do this? You have are a technical issue? Are we still yeah. good? Gonna are we still good? Yeah, we are with the cameras. I just want to get Martin. Because I think the sound. Are we still good on sound? Uh, I think get Martin the recorder stop and the computer is still going. Okay. I'm sure we can, we can still go. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, 
Let's just confirm we've got sound before we go ahead. Hey, look at, I was, I was blowing smoke in your face. Yeah, yeah, I feel high right now. Oh, do you? What goes in there? Power went on enough, even the screen went off. Are we good? Just flavor. We, oh. can, we can go? Yeah. It's like right. shisha. A lot okay. healthier though. Mm. But that was going to be my next question. Oil. I actually wanted to ask you about CBD oil. It's not CBD oil. Oh, right. Because I want to get CBD oil. It'll get me high. I have, do you have experience with that? It will get you high. Oh. But do you have, have you tried that before? And was it was was the high pretty good? No. It's, it's, it's different to like the high from. Are, are you recording this conversation? Right? <laughs> yes, we are. It's, it's, it's our shit. It's, it's yeah, no. He says one of the, he says the sound wasn't affected, so we can oh, we can okay. go. Where were we? Depression. <laughs> <laughs> Depression. Um, so yeah, yes. and uh, and you don't know that this is what's happening to you. Then you discover that you are not eating. You're not. You know. You're unkempt. You're not looking after yourself properly. Um, you are. Does loose? Does the plug, eh? Hey, won't burn your stuff. All right. Okay, we can proceed. So, uh, if if I start noticing, I'm a, I'm a little withdrawn. I'm my appetite is all over the place. I'm unkempt. Can't get it up. Is that so? Can I diagnose myself as being depressed? Not really. Not really. Kind of. Yeah. No, you can't. <clears throat> you can't. You can't tell when you're depressed. It it's takes very, other people it's, to tell it's, it's you. It's very difficult. It takes it takes other people around you to tell you because for you, you are so so engrossed in your own emotions and things like that. It's very difficult because you are too focused on the situation until something makes you stop focusing on the situation, and focusing on yourself. Uh, then maybe, just maybe, you might, you know. But otherwise, generally speaking, it's difficult. But in your case, how how did you overcome this dark period? So what happened to yeah. me was that uh, one of my friends. In fact, two of them um, started coming home because they noticed that I was very withdrawn from everybody. And um, yeah, and uh, yeah, one of them just told me, you know, you can't you can continue like this. We have to do something about this. Yeah. So what's the something they did? They would take me to soccer games. So we would go to Sunset Stadium to watch football and sit there in the hope that, uh, you know, I would snap out of myself. Eventually it worked. Never considered therapy? I did. Considered somebody else, somebody else considered therapy on my behalf. And did you go? No, I didn't. But I think I should have. <laughs> you, you still can. No, right now, no. Why not? I like the space where I am right now. I like my current problems. No, but then again, because you, you think you like where you are now. You, I could be wrong. You're the doctor here. I'm not. But I can't be my own doctor, so you could be right. Right. So, you could think you've overcome it. You could think, nah, I'm good, I'm over that. But then it could have affected who you are. You've just suppressed it. And it will most likely take another event. It could not be a firing because you own your own practice now. But it could be a loss in a contract or whatever else to trigger that. So, the fact that it hasn't, it, it hasn't popped up doesn't really mean that you're really over it. It could just mean that you've suppressed it. It's very possible. Yeah. No, no, I agree. It's very possible. I think you fall in that bracket of men that, you know, view... Let me, let me put it this way. Depression, especially in men, us men around this table, is viewed as a personal weakness. In general, yeah. It, now, it's, um, it's, it's, it's viewed as admitting weakness. How can we change the narrative for us men? It's difficult. Talking about it more. It's difficult. Um, men are difficult. If today, for example, I said, um, men, let's gather at such, such a place to come and talk about issues related to your health. I'll just get a handful of people showing up. Because men don't want to come to a place where they feel vulnerable, where they feel, you know. Mm. If I said that to women, though, I would have no place to put them. <laughs> 
Yeah. Women are very interested in their health. Very interested. Maybe that's why they live longer. But I think talking about it more um, is cardinal in people understanding it. I We had Maria. Watch the episode. She spoke about how she got into depression. And I read, I read some of the comments that people, that people made. And everybody... Well, not everybody, but some people, I don't know if it's ignorance or they actually don't know. Well, thank you. I had a flaccid mic there, didn't I? I don't know if it's ignorance or they, or they actually really believe that, but people were saying, oh, everyone is depressed these days. Even I'm depressed because I didn't have fuel money. And... No, it's a lack of understanding. Right? It's because a, a, being the, sad or unhappy about something it's not depression. it's not depression because depression again is also there's clinical depression yes which is a chemical imbalance mm -hmm. right and a lot of people don't understand what depression is they feel and thank you for putting it that way because i've said that depression doesn't mean you're sad no everybody's going to be sad if yeah. i spill my juice right now i'm going to be sad. sad but that means it doesn't mean but you're that's depressed. A, there yeah. you go and still speaking of men and how you said uh if you brought it up to women this place would be packed mm -hmm. your clinic or is it your hospital will be packed Men, we can gather for a beer, we can chat about girls anytime, you know, we can have conversations and the likes. But why do you think the conversation about health is a particularly different one to have amongst us guys? It's simple. Uh, men don't want to talk about things that affect you. Men mm. want to talk about everything else. Everything else except, except you. Yeah. It's, it's very, that's why I find that it's very easy for guys to be drinking with a guy for six months and they don't even know the name of the guy. But what brings them together is the event, is the activity. <laughs> that yeah. actually happened right yeah. here. This guy here cut his dreadlocks. I did not notice that. <laughs> he did oh, really? <laughs> One of our camera people, apart from Nicholas, he's been coming for <laughs> weeks. Why is he? I didn't even know his name. <laughs> Why? Because we, no, no one here knows. Because for you guys, Wait, what's the guy's name? What is it? Nicholas. The what's the other? It's the activity that brings you together. Exactly. That's and it. That's it. <laughs> So the activity has happened. Right. Nice. But with women, you know, they want to know who the person is, who your children are, who you are sleeping with and whatever. Those things. Women are interested in that. I also feel like the fragile male ego as well plays a part. Yeah, it also has to do with uh, your upbringing. Definitely. Mm -hmm. You were told that, you know, you can't do these certain things because you don't show weakness. You are a man. Which is sad, really. Which is extremely sad. Which also taps into the ego that I've mentioned, which also yeah. taps into cheating. Yeah. When you're with a spouse, yeah. I feel the only other reason why men would cheat is to fill that void. Because the only reason a guy cheats is because of ego. 100%. Interesting. 100%. You, don't, you don't think so? No, no. Um, I'm saying interesting because I agree mm -hmm. with what you're saying. Yeah, it is true. Doc, I think while you're here, uh, you know, us guys have a lot of questions that we never bring to the doctor. Like you said, guys, going to the hospital, unless you are in a critical condition. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can ask on behalf of gentlemen, like, you know, what are some of the common diseases that affect men and how can we as men avoid these diseases? So when you say common, yeah, you, you, you quickly have to say diabetes. Hmm. Like these lifestyle diseases. You have to quickly have to say diabetes. You have to say hypertension. Hmm. All right. Now, out of these two diseases, several other things come out as well, okay? A erectile dysfunction, where, you know, you just can't get an erection, or you can't sustain an erection uh, long enough. Um, a, of course, for Zambia, because of where we are, HIV is a big conversation, uh, health-wise, and also mental health issues. We just finished talking about depression and things like that. Those are some of the uh, things really that affect men. Now, <clears throat> the other thing that is not really emphasized so much is alcoholism. We have a serious problem of alcoholism that affects men. In Do you hear this, Kalenga? Yeah. Yeah. He's talking to alcoholics. Mm -hmm. so, so alcohol and all the diseases that relate to alcohol are, are a big problem in this country. Huge. Erectile dysfunction. Yeah. Yo. It hit home, huh? Yeah, that's why I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> Erectile dysfunction. Uh, just a quick one before we move to your personal life. Um, do you have any words of advice for men who are suffering from, you know, things like erectile dysfunction, prostate cancer, or even impotence? Mm, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's tough for the men out there. Men don't have safe spaces where they can go and confide in someone. Mm. Um, women, it's easy. They have friends who they talk to and share issues with. 
by the time your friend, even someone you drink with, tells you that he has such a problem, he's not having an erection anymore. It's extremely difficult. Yeah. Uh, and so what we've done at our clinic, mm. we've created a safe space for men to come and, and share their issues. Uh, it's safe in the sense that it's confidential and it's, it's not judgmental. No one's going to judge you. And, um, and our goal is to try, to try and help you, actually. So, so, so for men who have these issues of erectile dysfunction, they also prostate cancer and want to check yourself and things. Yeah, we've created that space at our clinic. Where's your, where's your clinic? So we're on Rhodes Park. We're in Rhodes Park on Omelo Mumba Road. What's it called? A Care Peak Specialist Clinic. Mm -hmm. okay. Care what? Care Peak. Care Peak. Mm -hmm. hmm. okay. Interesting. Yeah. Can we talk about his personal life now? Well, would you charge us if we came? Yeah, if we came. Uh, you, you two. Nelson has a problem. He, he told me about it. He confided for, in for me. What? Ati? Charge you for what? I don't know. Consultation? Yeah, yeah, you would be charged consultation. Really? I thought we're friends now. I thought we were oh, brothers. I see. What yeah. is this now? In fact, friends are the ones who should be supposed to business. <laughs> exactly. So? Yeah, no, true. No, absolutely, true. I agree. <laughs> but have you ever noticed, have you ever noticed how like when you're a lawyer or when you're a doctor, if you go to a bride, the minute that people know you're a doctor, actually, I wanted to ask you because my <laughs> knee had some, the amount of free consultation people take advantage of. Yeah, it's... Um, it comes with territory. It comes with the territory, I mean, huh? You go to it comes. Actually, I had an issue uh -huh. as I pursue a beer. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, it comes with the territory. Suddenly, someone's telling you two weeks ago at the zero 03 I had a headache. Do you know what it is? <laughs> a headache is what it is. From two, two weeks, weeks ago. ago at zero 03 in the morning, I had a headache. Just uh, to have the headache now, no, I don't. But so, I just, so why are you bothering some, me? Yeah. When the headache comes, comes come with pay 200 bucks. So, yeah. yeah. No, no, no that it. happens a lot. Yeah. Doc, I love to talk about your personal life now. I'm, I'm taken back to the 90s. Remember that program? I think it was Karis time he used to host it. Mixed Blessings. Yeah. You remember yeah. that one, eh? Yeah, yeah. And he would interview couples that are in what he loved to call zebra marriages, black mm. and white people mm. or, you know, mixed races. Before I even describe what kind of a marriage you're in, tell us a bit more about your love story. With my wife? Yes. No, we met at university. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's very romantic. She was. Was there anybody uh, else you were in love with, there, doctor? She was a junior medical student. I was a senior medical student. Kapuala la Kagero. Yeah. I, I thought it was going to be more poetic than that. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, it you wasn't. You saw her. Not at Kapuala, but what, what was what were the Time dynamics? Of, yeah. Um, I, I think we. We were friends for a long time before uh, anything. That's what. That's another thing that I don't get. And let's 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 be real about this, yeah. Doc. You see, uh, she, she's beautiful. I I assume. No, your assumption is correct. Yeah. So you see, I've uh, really seen her before. Uh, no, <laughs> no, you should. He speaks like he's really before. No, you must. I don't know if you want me to see your wife. No, you should. You should see her. Really? Yeah. yeah. I, invite me. <laughs> I'm inviting you now. I'm happy to. Send me a pin. Is it to your house where, I, where I'm supposed to come to? Wherever. Okay. Mm. But anyway, at a point that I was, I was getting to before you invited me to see your wife, is you mentioned you were friends for a long time. Mm. I've never met a guy who sees a really beautiful woman and says, oh, that woman is so beautiful. She's so hot. I have to make her my friend. That doesn't happen as guys. Because it's not friends that you want to... That, that comes to mind first. I mean, of course, come on. We are using the word friend for... In quotes. Not in quotes. To make conversation practical. I mean, wh what word is there other than friends? Girlfriend? Well, you could say that, yeah. But, no. but otherwise, really, frankly speaking, friend for the, for the, for the, for the actual meaning of the word friend between a, a, a young man and a beautiful girl, mm -hmm. as far as in the mind of a young man is concerned, that doesn't exist. Maybe in the mind of a girl, it there does. You go. Yeah. But in the mind of a young man, that, that stuff, this is what I keep telling girls all the time. <laughs> that these boys you see, you call your friends, as far as they are concerned, they're just waiting for a chance. For, uh, definitely. But girls don't get it. <laughs> one, one slip no, up and I mean how many time, I, How many times I say it, girls don't get it. No. Uh, girls, they can, there's, that, that platonic relationship is bullshit. It, well, it is on the girl's part. Well, I get it, it. It is nonsense, and I'll tell you that. But as far as it only exists in the mind of a girl. That's my point. Uh, why? Because they are more morally upright. Absolutely. They are better human beings. Yeah. The naivete is cute. Uh -huh. But with us as guys, we know that... Uh, you know, just one one uh, shot. Half just a shot a, even. The opportunity. Just open the door just slightly like this. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Your wife, is she... What, what, where is she? 
she's Indian. Indian. She's Indian. Mm-hmm. Wow. Now I believe she must be hot. No, she's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She is on that. Uh, no, she's very pretty. How long so, have you been married? What's that Indian channel again? We've been married 12 Zero. years. Zero. 12 years. Mm-hmm. Oh, let me, t- let me tell you my experience with an Indian girl. She wow. actually was dating. We didn't date. We just had something casual. That window of opportunity opened. No, no, yeah, no, 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 no. It's like, like right off the bed, fam, we both knew what it was. I recently bumped into... She was really pretty back then. I recently bumped into her three days ago um, at some restaurant, and she's let herself go. You know, to a point where I saw her, my mind registered, and my mind was like, there's no way that's the same girl. Until she walked up to me, and I'm like, Jesus, what the hell happened to you? <laughs> now, that was. Do you, do you feel like you dodged the bullet there? I did. Yeah, lucky you. Dr. Mjajati, your wife is Indian. And, you know, the idea of interracial marriages, it's, not a, it's, it's, it's a bit uncommon in this country. It's not something you see every day. What's your family immediately accepting of her? On, but I, I know there was probably more pressure on her side than yours. But let's start with your family first. There, what was, was it like when you introduced was, them to an Indian lady? There was pressure on my family still. No, oh, okay. Um, remember, I come from Mashona land. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there, was, there was pressure on my side. Where in Zima you, was your dad from? Shivu. Okay. So, um, yeah, there was pressure on my side. Well, um, to marry a black girl? My, my mother had a few concerns. Like? Um, to her, her main concern, I remember at the time was, you know, how do I relate with, you know, somebody from a foreign space? Mm-hmm. Um, Culture, but, but, but today, today they are very close, like really, really tight. It's interesting to to watch. And how was it when you decided to get married? The whole did you have to pay Lobola? No, I was paid. I was about you to were ask paid. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that how, also how much are you worth? In, I was paid in gold. <laughs> in gold. Yeah, yeah. I was what? paid. Yeah, worth. Oh, you married well, Doc. No, I did. You married well. <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of you. <laughs> Look at the pride on his face. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Uh, and now, the, I was paid. You, the pressure on your side, that, that was minimal. But again, you, yeah. you have to understand the Indian culture. Though. Of course, why, absolutely. Why, do, you, do you know why they pay the man? Tell me. Here's why they pay the man. Hmm. The reason they pay the man is not because that's how much you, you are worth you yourself. No, no, no. It's a message to you from her family that we are giving you this child who don't want to hear she's starving. So in the unlikely event that you don't have anything to feed her, take we from this. take this. So you're giving gold bars? Yeah. Like the big gold bars? Well, not really the big gold bars, yeah. but I mean, I received Enough. gold. Enough. And, uh, and, uh, and in their own tradition, generally speaking, yeah. right? Uh, sometimes they would give the guy a, a car, a house, money, and stuff like that. The whole concept is that we are giving you our daughter. We don't want to hear that she's starving. So how, how much, so how much was the gold worth? Yeah. I can't remember. But have you, have you, have you sold it or you, you, did you I'm save it somewhere? I'm not allowed to say. Is it in the Bank of Zambia somewhere? I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> okay, let me ask you a different yeah. question. If I was to marry an Indian lady mm-hmm. and they were to give me gold, how much gold do you think is reasonable for me to accept? No, it's not about what you can accept. Yeah. Okay, how much would be reasonable? Not oh, enough. Which is about, about how much? No, I can't say. I Do- honestly Do- don't help know. me out. Okay. <laughs> I'm dating an Indian girl. I honestly girl. don't know. Really? To be honest, I don't know. I okay. don't know how they arrive at how much to give. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. But but just understand that the concept behind why they pay the man is because they are Take saying, we child. are giving you a child, so you have no excuse now. Here's the money. So is she origi- So obviously, originally from, from India, what did she grow up in Zambia, though? Yeah, she, was, she grew up in Zambia. Yeah. Okay. Born and raised. She's a Zambian. Right, okay. She's okay. a Zambian of Indian origin. Oh, okay. Just like I'm a Zambian of Zimbabwe. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Okay. How many kids? We have four children. All girls, yeah? Yeah, all girls. So you know what, the, you know what that means? Because he's got all girls as well. So there's a theory. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I want to hear this. <laughs> you don't, you don't want to hear this. No, let him say. <laughs> that as a man, if you have only girls, you used to be a hoe in your past life. In, in my pa- not present life. Yeah, right? past. No, past life, I don't care. So you used to be? Whatever I was. I, 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 do I even know? But I don't know. Do I know what I was? Do you know what no, you were in no, your past life? Yes, past I know life, what I was. Elson means before you met your wife. That's what I mean oh, by past that's what life. it means. No, I don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. Oh, you meant that? Yeah. Uh, Not no, reincarnation, uh, that, that, past that, life. No, uh-huh. no, no. no. Yeah. He was a monk, bro. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> please. Girls, girls, used, girls used to literally run away from me, bro. I wasn't attractive. 
deep I in the books all the time. Deep in the books all the time. And 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 I was turned down more often. If you I had, ever you, asked a girl you had no out, game. 90% of the time she would say no. We still had to be friends first. And, and guys in university, I remember, if the guys I, I was in university with would see yeah. this, they'll probably even remember and laugh about it. Yeah, they used to tease me for it. <laughs> for you getting rejected all the yeah, time? Yeah, rejected all the time. We used to even make fun of it and laugh about it. But you're funny. But also, even in the way I used to do it, also was also terrible. I remember this girl, she even cried once. Uh, how do you approach a girl in the staircase? In the stairway of... <laughs> st- <laughs> when opportunity presents itself. So, so, so we, yeah. we laugh about that as well. But part of it was just... I was Preparing just, you for I was this. just a joke also. Right. I wasn't serious. You've got four daughters. Yeah. You're a Zambian black man. Mm-hmm. Your wife is Indian. And... Which culture are your children drawn to most? Especially that they spend most of their time with their mom. How much of both of you are in your children? You know, I think about that a lot. Yeah. But what you will notice is that if you come around us, you will see that our kids are exposed to both families. The reason that works is because we, we waited until we had parental consent on both sides before we got married. Mm. And that has helped. If we didn't have parental consent on both sides, it would be very difficult for my children to go and hang out with their grandmother on my on my yeah. wife's side. It would be very difficult <clears throat> even on my side. But my mother-in-law stays with us a couple of times. She'd be home most of the time. My kids go to my mother-in-law's house all the time. So 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 my children are exposed to both worlds. You would say equally. And religion? Is she Christian? Yeah, my wife is Christian. I'm Christian. Ah, Our kids are Christian. I think Christian. That, that simplifies everything. But, yeah. But, but, but when my mother in law wants to take my kids to her temple, the Hindu hall. Yes, I allow my kids to go because I need them to also experience that cultural. Because it's part of who mm, they are. Yeah. So, from a cultural context, because remember that in Hinduism, there's no this demarcation like us Christians have. Now I'm a Christian. Mm-hmm. Now I'm not. Mm-hmm. You understand? Or mm-hmm. what I'm doing now is for Christian Christianity. What I'm doing, now, yeah. But f- with Hinduism, everything is religion. Everything, including the food that you eat, how you eat it, how, how you, you dress, cook it, how you dress, including how you breathe, is religion. So, so if I'm going to say my kids should experience their where her, their mother comes from, they would have to experience some of those things. Wait a minute, your mother-in-law. Practice. She's, she's Hindu. She's a practicing Hindu. And your father-in-law? He's, he's late. Like how far? Mm, quite a while. Quite a while? Because I'm trying to understand how... No, no he wasn't yeah. alive by the time I was getting married. Okay. Because I'm trying to understand like how her mother-in-law... And I, and I know how much influence parents have over their children, especially when it comes to Indians. How your wife ends up Christian and her mother is still Hindu. You know what's yeah. funny? When we were in university... Um, because I was still Christian then, yeah. which I still am. Mm-hmm. When we'd go for Bible study, m- m- my girlfriend's mother would bring my girlfriend for Bible study and drop her and then come and pick her up afterwards. A follow up to what you're mentioning, mm-hmm. where she ended up being Christian. How is it that it ended up you adopting their culture when it came to Lobola? Why didn't they yeah, accept yeah. Lobola? How come you are the one that had to sort of accept their culture in a way of doing things when it got to getting married? So what happened was this. When my uncles went to negotiate my marriage with her relatives, we come from Marshall Island. We are very patrilineal, right? So what ended up happening was that we also paid and they also paid. Right, I get it. That makes sense. Ah. Okay. You know, I, I dwelt so much on the issue of her parents' religion and culture and all that because I, I know... They were, they were very flexible people. I know mm. people, like friends, who have... A, a friend who's married an Indian lady and her family disowned her. Okay? Her family disowned her because how are you marrying out of our race, out of our culture, out of our religion? You didn't have any of those things, did you? No. Hey, you lucky man, man. No. I, I lucky think- man. I think the reason the reason we didn't have any of that is because we we literally waited for parental consent. We mm. waited four years to get parental consent. Wow, that's deep. Lastly, Doc, you know, uh, I don't know if you're able to tell us a bit about the Aaron Mujajati Foundation. Why it's so near and dear to you? Right. So 
I, I, we've been doing a lot of uh, philanthropic work, yeah. giving back to the community. And um, we felt that, look, instead of doing this informally, mm. let's go ahead and formalize the, the work that we do. And uh, that's how the Aaron Jajati Foundation was born. Okay. Yeah. Elson, before we get to the Z trivia, anything you want to... Oh man, a lot, but we don't have time because there's a lot of the stuff that you were saying yeah, on your social in, media, in, right? Man. Yeah, I actually yeah. want to hit the social media before we get to the trivia. Yeah, because I'd open up your page where you're like, there's no. Hold on, let me not let me not miss oh, the good you search, Can I Actually, bring one up? there's no proof that taking morning after pills I'm, many times <laughs> I'm there as well can make you infertile. <laughs> yeah. No, no, there's no proof. The you actual, the actual, because because I, I bought a lot of them. A lot, a lot of different girls, oh, okay. and the actual box says that. No. I promise no. you it does. No, no. Do you have the box somewhere near yeah. here? No, of course not. All right. No, there's no proof. It won't make you infertile. Really? No. So you can chuck them back like TikToks? You can, but you have to understand that uh, it is not effective at preventing pregnancy. Especially when you're ovulating. Especially if, it's, if, if what you're looking for is long-term um, contraception. Mm -hmm. So, so, so the, the, the emergency contraception mm -hmm. is for emergencies only, okay? And it works within a certain context. Now, if what you are looking for is long-term contraception, that pill is, is, is useless. It's an emergency contraceptive. Yes. Oh, interesting. So this thing where uh, tomorrow morning you've taken, next week you've <laughs> taken, the other day you've taken, it's a sign that you need to be on a long-term strategy. Mm. Mm. Or just use a condom. Better still. Yeah. Mm. Or abstain. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> abstinence, city chair. How that campaign died in the Trendsetters magazine. <laughs> Nobody talks about abstinence anymore. Even condom use is a message that's slowly dying. Uh, th this generation would laugh at you if you, st if you talked about abstinence. Abstinence. Even they'll, condom use is slowly they'll, fading. They'll, you would sound like you are saying something completely foreign. <laughs> Dr. Mjajati, we, yes, we've sir. asked you so many questions. Is there maybe that one that you expected that we haven't asked? Or is there something that you want to talk about that we haven't spoken about? No, no, not really, actually. Yeah? Not really, actually. You guys are doing very well. You, you watch our shows. I'm sure there's something that you expected we'll touch on that we haven't. You can bring it up now. No, no, not really. Not sure? yet. Not yet. You guys have been nice so far. Elson, you haven't been yourself today. No, I have He been. just said we are nice. So what are you trying to say about I'm me? I'm saying you haven't been yourself today. No. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> No, Dr. Mujajati, let's play that Z trivia. You know, we always like to end our shows with, uh, you know, some trivia questions. And for today's episode, because we're here with you, the good doctor. Mm -hmm. First of all, do you even plan on doing any TV shows in addition to your Facebook? Um, those ideas have been thrown yeah. around, but I don't think I'd be good for TV. I think we should have a health podcast with you where guys can ask you those, you know, questions anonymously. That they can't oh, ask. Oh, wait. Here's yeah. what I also... So, so you honestly think I'd be good for TV? You would yes, be good for TV. Absolutely. I think really? So. Yeah. I'm sure the people yeah. in the comments right now are saying Dr. Mjajaji should do a podcast like this one for health. Wow. Where we can send you anonymous questions uh -huh. about, you know, things that guys won't just talk about anyhow. Mm. Erectile dysfunction, uh, impotence, uh, foods to eat for, you know, libido and things like oh, that. Okay. Yeah. Oh. No, I, look I, at that. Look at just I, here I, the I, response yeah, here. The guys want to know. I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I am asking for a friend. No, I've, we, I've, I've never, I've never considered it seriously. Yeah. Um, because I don't think I'd be good for TV. Hey, I don't, I don't, I don't let's think, do a pilot. I don't think I have the pedigree to to do TV. Let's do a, a pilot. And the, and the people that do have the pedigree are useless at TV. Every oh, really? Yeah. 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 Nelson has never done this before. No pedigree whatsoever. We just threw him into the deep end. You didn't Straight. throw me into shit. We threw him into the deep end. <laughs> <laughs> we threw him into a pit latrine. <laughs> we. You didn't throw me into <laughs> shit. Um, <laughs> the weirdest patient that you had, like, have you ever had, like, a like a female that came to you with, like, some stuck things stuck in an orifice? No, no not that. I had a patient uh -huh. once. Uh, this was really strange. Female. She would come to the hospital for, for examination, right? right. Uh, for different things. And she would come to the hospital. I was in OBS and Gaini at the time. By the time I realized that what was bringing her was that she just wanted me to do a vaginal exam every time she came. <laughs> it was a bit too late. Wait, wouldn't bring it up. Wait, 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 wait. She wanted you to do what? A vaginal exam. Why? So... It took me a while to figure out that this patient is actually okay 
What she just wants is for the doctor to do a vaginal exam. So she's shy. I don't know whether she's getting a kick out of it or something. Why, why did she want... Was it you specifically that she wanted you to touch her pum pum? I, I have no idea, but it just turned out that, you know, you start asking yourself, there's actually nothing wrong with this patient. And how often will she come? Uh, and then... Like, not come that, that what, way, but... What, <laughs> what, what made come. it click was... There was a visit she came and we never did a vaginal exam and she looked rather disappointed. How old was she? Middle age. What's middle age? 40s? I think she was in her early 30s. That's but the weirdest patient I've ever had. Are you, was she married? <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. Black? Yeah, Zambian. You got a phone number? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Why, why, why are you guys laughing? <laughs> He's not a gynecologist, but he wants to take a look. But in terms of in terms of <laughs> disease states, like disease states that people come with, yeah. Ah, uh, see, as doctors, we are trained not to get surprised. So, I don't think. Maybe it's those sticks we used to pull out of people's uteruses, <laughs> like those who attempt who attempt um, abortion, abortion, and then they put things in the in their uh. insides. So go and pull out a stick Jesus. and it's thinking, and someone is literally almost rotting and dying. It's been there for the longest yeah, time. Those, yeah, yeah This is why I'll never be a doctor because number one, I would laugh. Why? <laughs> I have. I can assure you, you wouldn't laugh. And let me tell you why you wouldn't laugh. No, it depends on the situation. No, the training, the training. I don't know about nowadays, mm -hmm. but the training we went through, they literally get you and desensitize you and recreate what they want. Mm. So they expose you to things such that very few things surprise you on the human body. Mm. Very because few. right now, and this is this is this is a big part of why I'm single. Right now, there's this there's there's a whole lot of new scary ass STDs that are out there. No, in that department, there's plenty. Like there's plenty, Like right? there's stuff that I can show you even now. No, no thanks. You'd probably not even want to eat. But to to us, it's it's normal. It's just another day at the office. Yeah, it's things we see all the time. So which is exactly why I said I'm not a doctor because I would say number one, who who to, who told you to come here? So so that's why you that's why you wouldn't. Laugh yeah, and number two, just doctor. when you leave, please take that chair with you. <laughs> 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 I shall. And number three, he still wants that number. <laughs> Joke, myth or fact? Number one, is it a myth or is it a fact? Erectile dysfunction only affects older men. It's a myth. Bullshit. Only affects older men? Mm. It's a myth. Bullshit. It, it happens at any age. Mm. It's, 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 it becomes frequent with age. As, ah. as you grow, the numbers increase. But we see it even in young people. The chick is in front of you and Johnny, I mean, Johnny just feels You do form. realize that yeah. by definition, early ejaculation is erectile dysfunction. Where mm. do you find most early ejaculation? It's in younger people. Mm, so that falls in that, that category as well. Uh, myth or fact, men can't suffer from breast cancer. Of course they can. It's a, it's a myth. Because first of all, you have breast tissue mm. and you will get breast cancer as a man. It's very possible. And the trouble with breast cancer in men is that it tends to be very aggressive. Hmm. So if you see breast cancer in a man, it's usually too late and it has gone. What kind of man is? is <laughs> what kind of man? What kind of cancer is popular, man? Prostate. For Zambia and the world over, if it's black men, it's prostate because one in every one in every four black men will develop prostate cancer in a lifetime. And that's and the prostate exam is where you have to get uh, a thumb stuck up your ass. Partly, yeah. That's part of the exam, yeah. So here's what I also heard, that a guy's G-spot is in his ass. It's in the prostate. And where's the prostate? So if you stimulate the prostate enough, you ejaculate. And where's yeah. the prostate? The prostate. Yeah. It sits just below your bladder, but we access it through the anus. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. God has got a sense of humor. Why? <laughs> <laughs> what, the anus <laughs> excites you? No, it doesn't. Oh, okay. So could this mean that homosexuals have a more... No, I've, 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 I don't know to answer your question. You I mean, I mean, look I, so curious. I'm, I'm very curious right now. I don't know to answer your question. I've, I've never had the, the, I mean, the, the opportunity. Can the gay people please comment? To Ooh. speak with a, with a, with a gay person. I, I, to, to explore that situation. I, I mean, if, if, if the man's G spot is where you say it is, like in the anus right above the bladder, then. 
gay guys probably have a more intense I, I think orgasm than straight guys. No, not really. Yeah. No, not really. The the reason people say that is like this. Yeah. For example, you if you died right now. Mhm. And maybe you didn't have children and we want you to have children. We can still harvest your sperm. No, oh, yeah, yeah. How we will do it is that we will just put an electric shock on your prostate and you will ejaculate even if you are dead. Which which, yes. which brings me to my next what? question. Wait, wait, calm down. Calm down. You're getting excited. You didn't know that as well, did you? Of course I knew that. Oh, you know everything, yeah. Oh, you Do- finished you yeah. finished college, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> So, <laughs> have you have you ever administered a prostate exam or test? Plenty times. Have, has there ever been a case where a guy came or ejaculated <laughs> when you're doing that? Well, um, I'm leaving. Th- th- things happen in a doctor's room that you are not allowed Is to that, be surprised. I'm not going to ask who. <laughs> uh, so it has happened. Well, it's very possible. Ah, wait, doctor, answer the question. Huh? <laughs> has a guy come? <laughs> During a prostate test. <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> but, Let's move on. Okay. But from a physiological standpoint, yeah, it is possible. possible. The possibility is there. But I didn't have I didn't check the I didn't check the guy to say hey. Is, is <laughs> well you would have to ask and check, you know. Is everything but, okay up front? No, but you can see the evidence is right there. No. Um, <laughs> because you see, when 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 pants are wet. <laughs> you can't just assume. It could be anything. It could be anything. Don't, could unless be, if he moans first. It could be first. blood, it could be urine, it could be anything. <laughs> oh, so that's when you have to ask to see if he needs further medical attention. <laughs> yeah, but rarely do you ask. <laughs> Doc, moving on. Uh, myth or fact? Hot tubs and tight underwear lead to impotence. 100%. No, what? that one is true. And sitting next to a fire. That one is true. In fact, there's, yeah. a, there's a new contraceptive for men. Mm-hmm. I heard about that. That they are trying to develop. The where, one that, where you put your balls it's a in a cup. Yeah, yeah. And then you put your, 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 scr- your, your, your balls, balls in, a, in a cup like this. Yeah. And then you put water in there as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it boils you that switch shit. switch it on. Yeah. And then it releases microwaves, like the way you do an actual microwave. Mm-hmm. So it kills the sperm. It will cook the... The sperm, the the testicles, mm-hmm. and you you would not have kids. Wait, for, but forever? it's reversible. It's reversible. Forever or for that particular session? For for the for not for that session, but for a considerable uh, like span a week. of time. So so at present moment, it's now it's at like experimental stage. It's not it's in South Africa, is they actually? Oh, that it's commercial already the, in South Africa. The yeah. women oh. in Zambia will be happy to have this man. Especially those who complain so about so contraceptives you dip, making you them gain dip, weight and you stuff. You dip your yeah. testicles in a, in a, It's like a cup. Designed for it's like a bathtub for and your, then, yeah, your yeah. balls, and then you ball dip tub. your your balls in there, or you put water, and then yeah, All right, it's a ball tub. Uh, Doc, uh, myth or fact? You need you need to drink protein shakes to build muscle. If you are actively exercising, yes, you do need to eat, to take in a lot of protein if you are building muscle. Yeah. The next question I need to ask our producer why she asked this question is it because of your head? I'm I'm starting to wonder. Uh, wearing a hat or blow drying your hair causes boldness. How did you get bold? No, Shit. boldness is a hormonal issue. So that's a it, bullshit question. It's what the hell is wrong with what? her, dude? It's, it's not like a stupid question. It's a doc. You'd have you'd be no. Surprised. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hormonal issue. Uh, boldness is as a result of excessive testosterone. Hmm. You didn't know that. Wait, hold on. You also said it's actually impossible to breathe with your tongue out. It was a joke. <laughs> I just want people to stick because did tongue. you see me stick my tongue out now? You, you did. I did. Oh no! But I'll tell you what's almost impossible to sneeze with your <laughs> eyes open, though. <laughs> it's do what? <laughs> to sneeze with your eyes open. Oh really? Yeah. You can't. No, you can't. You actually. can't. Doc, no. myth or fact? No, you can't. You can't sneeze with your eyes no, open. No, you can't. Yeah. Unless if you are a freak, like me, yeah. Or oh, are you a freak? No, I can do it. That's yeah. I'm just. I'm. I'm just saying. I okay. Can okay. We can move on. Doc, <laughs> myth or fact? Pulling out is an effective method of contraception. It is a method of contraception, hey, but not effective. it is not effective. You need superhuman strength to pull out, bro. Yeah, uh, you need a strong will, my brother. Especially uh, when there's been S- speaking of that, there's been a lot of failures. Can, can a woman? Case. Can a woman? <laughs> can your woman get pregnant from precum? Yes. Oh, really? Yes. It's very possible. Me? That I know. The of? likelihood. The likelihood. The likelihood, yeah. though, is less, but it's not impossible, right? 
There could be that one that got away. There's, there's someone you're worried about? No, 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 no. No. <laughs> no. I, I strap up. <laughs> I strap up. <laughs> Doc, it's, it's been... I, I didn't expect we have this much fun with you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Because every time we hear doctors, we think, you know, scholars who are always serious in, uh, you know, their lab coats or... But we are very serious. Always reading. Wait, but you're actually, a fun before doctor. We go, yeah. Going back to gay serious. people. Yeah. How much time have you got now? Two minutes. All right. So, going back to gay people. This is not in the script anymore. Okay. I can close my laptop. <clears throat> do you pe- do you believe people are born gay? No. Why? There's no evidence. Okay. Can you explain what a hermaphrodite is? Yeah. What is it? So, what you call hermaphrodite is what other people would call one of the disorders of sexual development. So there are several of them. Mm-hmm. So hermaphrodite is just one of them. Yeah. Uh, is what you'd call intersex mm-hmm. in common language. Right. Yeah. So you're able to see both sex organs. Well, yeah, you can. Right. Like cast next, to like, each, next to each other. Yeah, like yeah, like, yeah. like uh, Casta Semenya. I don't know if she is. Yeah, she is. Oh, okay. She says she is. She's intersex? Yes. Okay. However, because you have got both sex organs, what you identify as depending on the, um, this word always stumps in, t- testosterone, testosterone also yeah. then de- also then determines what you identify as do you believe that so if, if yeah, yeah. you believe it's that also right hormonal, yeah, yeah. so do you i also know personally of a female who's got so much testosterone she's never had a period yes 100 percent. because you see sexuality is or rather the question of gender has a very complex biological um, spectrum. Mm. Here's somebody who's born male. Mm -hmm. Testicle, penis, everything is Mm -hmm. there. And he is producing testosterone like everybody else. Mm -hmm. But the receptors for testosterone are not very well developed. Mm -hmm. And this guy will be behaving like (coughs) a woman. That's biology right there, right? 100% biology, yeah. So why then can that contradicts what you have just said that no it doesn't because if you check this guy's uh, chromosomal he's xy no i get that yeah so meaning that a determination of gender goes way beyond one parameter that's the point i'm trying to no make. but the gender that you're talking about yeah. are, are the sex organs and everything that builds you as a man mm-hmm. but just like what you've said the testosterone and what you identify as is something different mm-hmm. So it still could be possible that, yes, you could have the mechanisms of a man, but the testosterone that you have <clears throat> or what you identify it's as not could be different. Enough, yeah. so but th- that doesn't mean you're gay. Why wouldn't it? You see, being gay, in my view, mm-hmm. is that you have this propensity for a sexual attraction mm-hmm. to people of your gender, mm-hmm. same mm-hmm. gender as you. Right, right. Yeah. Now, what you identify as... Okay, you could have everything looking male, but you identify as female. Your it gender fluid. Make you gay. Yeah. Second, it doesn't make you gay. You mm-hmm. have to distinguish the two. Right. So, so being gay is that you have a sexual attraction to people of your gender. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But understand that just because, for example, I have I was born with this disorder mm-hmm. where my testosterone mm-hmm. does not, you know, sense testosterone very well Mm -hmm. and then i have this female i have a female predilection okay having that doesn't make me gay okay interesting i'm learning (laughs) dr majority (laughs) thanks a lot for coming through it's that yeah. podcast and we, we've had crazy fun with you like Thank i'm you happy guys. you've answered every question without you know telling us i can't answer that like uh some of the guests we've been having like who oh, you actually wear specs yes i do oh He's a doctor. What do you expect, man? Yeah, no. Well, like, seven, oh. seven years of study, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It takes a toll on your eyes, eh? Yes, I do. Yeah. It does. Thanks for coming through. And uh, regards to the family and uh, I'm still Namaste. For, I'm, still, I'm still waiting for that invite. And the number for, for that what lady. Invite? To your wife. To your, oh, my brother. And the, and, and, and the number for that lady who would come <laughs> you for. You said, do I have what? <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a couple of pictures for promo. Where would you want us to stand? Here is a special announcement from Muchinga Province brought to you by Chete FM.
The best radio station in Muchinga Province is also the biggest radio station in Muchinga Province. Having the widest coverage and broadcasting in Chinsali on 91.3 FM and in Nakonde on 89.9 FM. Chete FM reaches more people in Muchinga Province than any other private radio station. We have the best programming, the hardest working radio presenters and the widest coverage. Widest coverage. Radio is serious business to us. Advertise with Chete FM to reach more people in Mochinga Province. Call us on 0955-899-899. Chete FM. Radio for the people of Mochinga Province.